the second episode of Infiltrated with George Newmar. Last week we talked about the Bishop Nestow scandal with Father Altman. Uh, to this week we're changing pace. I'm actually in Cote d'Ivoire, the Ivory Coast of Africa, and I am in front of St. Paul's Cathedral in Abidjan, the urban and financial capital of Cote d'Ivoire. I have come to Africa to pursue a project, a book project hopefully, uh, in which I will examine the spread and the condition of Catholicism and Christianity on the continent of Africa. I am going to go to countries where Catholicism and Christianity are flourishing, but I'm also going to go to countries uh, where it's not flourishing and where it's failing, and Cote d'Ivoire is one of those countries. As you can see, this cathedral is a modernist monstrosity. It's an architectural monstrosity. It, it fails. It's called St. Paul's Cathedral, but St. Paul would be the last person to endorse the architecture of this cathedral. The cathedral is uh, con communicates a very confused uh, version of Catholicism and, and it's no wonder that Catholicism is failing here. And I've, I've been here about three, four days and I have seen that it is failing in this country. This uh, Cote d'Ivoire was a French colony for about 65, 70 years. And during that period Catholicism flourished. Uh, in 1960 uh, Cote d'Ivoire went independent and ever since then, and especially after Vatican II, the, the liberalism of Vatican II also played a role here, uh, Catholicism has been declining. And uh, it's been declining very badly, and now uh, only 17% of the population is Catholic, and out of that 17%, very few of those Catholics go probably go to church or practice the faith regularly. In fact, if you walk into the, this cathedral, which by the way is the second largest cathedral on the continent of Africa, it was built in 1985, I believe. It cost a huge amount of money. It was consecrated, I believe, by Pope John Paul II. But if you go into this cathedral today, it's a Thursday, it's early afternoon, there's nobody in there. It's like a ghost town. And what does that tell you about the condition of Catholicism on the Ivory Coast? It tells you that Catholicism is dead as a doornail there. So, uh, in fact, I've been to a number of parishes where I walk, in, I walk into the church and nobody's there except maybe one or two people. And that speaks to the, the moribund character of Catholicism on the Ivory Coast. Uh, but you know, have you ever noticed that anything named after St. Paul is something that he wouldn't approve of? This is an example of that. St. Paul would not approve of this ridiculous, amorphous figure uh, that they're using for this cathedral. What is, you know, how does this communicate Christianity to the faithful? It's obviously not. It's, it, it's, it's, it's the sort of nonsense we've been... Uh, uh, subjected to since Vatican II. Vatican II, the whole point of Vatican II was to take Catholicism out of Catholicism and that has been, that's one of the driving explanations for the decline of the faith and you see that the, a Catholicism without Catholicism produces modernist, hideous modernist architecture like this and it results in, in, a, in, a, in a, an interior of the church that's absolutely empty. Nobody's in there. Nobody's practicing the faith. Islam, however, is serious in Cote d'Ivoire, and Islam is resurgent. Islam is 40% of the population, and those Muslims are practicing their faith seriously. It is a relaxed, uh, I would say a fairly relaxed form of Catholicism, of uh, Islam. It's, uh, it's not particularly militaristic. You don't see any scary, you don't see Muslim women wearing scary burqas. In fact, they're, they're often very nice, polite, mild-mannered women who wear very colorful attire. The men are in kind of these soft sort of uh, pajama-like attire. You know, the Islam does not is not a very frightening uh, presence here in Cote d'Ivoire. But it's it, because the Muslims take their take their religion more seriously than the Catholics do, because they have a much uh, more um, disciplined culture and, and a, a much and then they have a higher degree of self-respect. Uh, Islam is enjoying a comeback in in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, in fact. This woman, this Islamic woman, made the point to me. She said, "You know, it's really not that. You know, the the Islam's resurgence here in Cote d'Ivoire is explained in part by the fact that Cote d'Ivoire started off as an Islamic um, country. In fact, you know, the, the roots of Islam are very deep in Cote d'Ivoire. Uh, they go back, you know, it's really uh, all the way to the I think eighth, ninth century. Uh, Islam was very uh, popular in West Africa. You know, in Cote d'Ivoire is." in West Africa. It's on the Atlantic Ocean. Abidjan here is on the Atlantic Ocean. It's in West Africa. It's fa facing south. And um, so, you know, Islam, uh, and I noticed that all the mosques, if you go to the mosques here in Abidjan, the neighborhoods around the mosques are stable and orderly, whereas the neighborhoods around the Catholic churches 
are pigsties and indescribably gross. In fact, I went to one uh, in, in Grand Bassam, which is the old, the, the former French capital uh, of uh, Cote d'Ivoire. That's where the French uh, ruled Cote d'Ivoire for, I think, decades. And it's a very uh, fascinating place, but it's also a very um, uh, uh, off-putting place. Now, in the absence of the French governance of Cote d'Ivoire, that area, Grand Bassam, has turned into a pigsty, at least in the Catholic parts of Grand Bassam. If you go to the neighborhood, for example, around the Church of the Immaculate Mary, it's it's indescribably gross. It's like an open sewer. And what does that tell you about the Catholic Church? It tells you that the Catholic Church is doing absolutely nothing to civilize the neighborhoods around it. And so that just gives the lie to the, the social justice church of Pope Francis, that so, the, the social justice crowd is, is failing to improve the lives of poor people. Uh, and, and I went into the Immaculate Heart Church and that too was empty, except for one fervent uh, Catholic who was praying very seriously. But it, was, it, was like, it too was like a ghost town. And it, it was a complete, um, I would say, you know, just a, 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 a ramshackle kind of parish. Uh, and all the, all the churches I've seen here in Cote d'Ivoire, they're all like that. They're all kind of ramshackle. In fact, the old cathedral, the Grand Bassam Old Cathedral, it, it looks almost like a, a lousy little parish now. It's decaying. Nobody seems to care too much for it. Uh, there's nobody inside. Uh, you know, so why, you know, th this is Cote d'Ivoire, unfortunately, the decline of Catholicism in Cote d'Ivoire, which I would attribute to Vatican, the liberalism of Vatican II, which took Catholicism out of Catholicism and killed off missionary activity, by the way. Vatican II basically said that missionary activity is irrelevant because the faith is optional, it's not essential. If the faith is, a, is, is just optional, why do you need missionary activity? You don't. And so missionary activity completely died in Cote d'Ivoire, and that's why the, the Catholic population is rapidly plummeting, and that's why Islam is, is eating the church's lunch. Uh, and it's not, you know, again, the Islam that's practiced here is a very, it's a very uh, moderate form of Islam. It's not particularly aggressive. I don't think it's very uh, proselytizing. But because the Muslims have their act together to a much greater degree than the, uh, the Christians do, uh, it's, it's, it's prospering and, and growing. And uh, the, actually, the, not all the Christians are failing. In fact, the evangelicals uh, who take their faith much more seriously than the Catholics, the Catholics do, and you can see that in the fact that their Sunday services are about five hours, whereas the Catholics are just phoning it in at 45 you know, to, to an hour. Uh, and, and not everybody's even going. Um, so the evangelicals are growing, some other Christian denominations are growing. Uh, Islam enjoys a bare majority at 40%. The population, the technical population of Cote d'Ivoire is around 39.5%. And uh, <clears throat> so, um, you know, Catholicism is definitely failing here. It's, this is an indictment of the, the social justice Catholicism of Pope Francis. It's clearly not improving a lot of the, a lot of the poor. If you, as measured by the fact that all the neighborhoods around the churches in Cote d'Ivoire are absolute pigsties, godless pigsties too. The people aren't even going to church. Uh, you know, I walked into Immaculate Heart and it, it was empty. And you know, the, but the getting to Immaculate Heart was just a, an ordeal. It was a, it was like walking through a the worst latrine, the worst bathroom you could possibly imagine. There was fecal matter in the air, there was urine, you know, the smell of urine. Uh, it was just appallingly dysfunctional. And the fact that a Catholic church is in the middle of all that and has done absolutely nothing to eliminate that dysfunction tells you all you need to know about the emptiness of Pope Francis's message concerning social justice. Social justice does not bring out the best in people, it brings out the worst in them and encourages uh, the worst in people, it, and, and it doesn't help the poor. The first victims of social justice, you know, which social justice is really just a euphemism for Catholic, for, you know, a Catholic, uh, a subversive socialist message under the guise of Catholicism. Uh, the first victims of that, of that ideology are the poor. Uh, you know, the, so again, you know, walk through the neighborhoods near the mosques, and those places are not pig-sized. They're stable, they're orderly, they're civilized, and that's why Islam is eating the church's lunch. Uh, and I've come here, and this, the reason for this uh, podcast exists is not simply, you know, I, I don't want to just uh, gloat over successes, Catholic successes in uh, Africa, and, and there are some. I want to look at the problems, and these problems, the problem here, this problem of social, of counterproductive, destructive social justice Catholicism, which does absolutely nothing to civilize uh, neighborhoods, it does nothing to improve the lot of the poor, it, does, it, it fails to communicate the faith to people, and again, look at this. Look at this hideous modernist structure. Does this tell you anything about 
anything compelling about Christianity? No, it's, all it does is communicate confusion. Uh, it's subversive. What is this? It's an amorphous human being or something? How does that possibly strengthen the faith? It doesn't. And that's, again, that's why Catholicism has died in Cote d'Ivoire since the French left, you know, in the 60s, and it's been steadily dying, and it's continuing to die. And I'll, another thing I noticed is that you can never get a hold of a bishop around here. They're all absentee bishops. We went, I went to the, uh, the old cathedral in Grand Bassam, you know, the, the one that was built by the French in 1895. It's not very big, and it's not well taken care of anymore. And I asked for the bishop, and of course he was gone. He wasn't available. He's probably somewhere in Europe or something. He's a... Uh, and then I went, came here, and the cardinal, uh, by the way, the cardinal of this place is called um, Jean-Pierre Cutla. He was appointed by, he was made a cardinal by Pope Francis. And you know why he was made a cardinal? Because he, he babbles about social justice. He, he says, you know, well, we need to work on eliminating verbal violence. Uh, he he's peddles a lot of ecumenical nonsense. He probably was part of the creation of this mo modernist monstrosity.